Marine reacts to SCP-1678, also known as Unlendon, and is object class Euclid, and is considered a subterranean SCP by the Vulgan. As always, I'm going to be posting the link to the original video and channel down in the description below, so go ahead and make sure that you check them out. As of right now, no new announcements, so let's get right into this SCP-1678. The fact that it's called Unlendon seems like it would be the opposite of London, and underneath it being subterranean. And as, since it's Euclid, there has to be some form of entrance that could be blocked pretty easily. I don't know what kind of entrance this may or may not be, or if, or if there even is one. Um, I mean, it could be a warp for all I know. But I mean, obviously you could block it with cement, steel bars, etc., etc. So that's kind of what I'm going off of. I don't know if it's just like an actual place or if it's actual uh, some, S some dash SCPs. Because on the thumbnail, I did see that it's got like a London guard with his, like his face covered. I don't know if it's just the one or there's going to be multiple. Or if it might just be exactly like London. But there's, the people there obviously are going to be different in some form of fashion. But before we get into the actual SCP video, don't forget to like, subscribe. It really does help me out a lot. Hit that notification bell right there. I will get notified every time I do upload. Sometimes uploading twice a day. Typically working on them in the mornings. And releasing them in the late afternoon to late evening. That way when you all get off work, you can enjoy these videos at your leisure. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and see what SCP-1678, or Unlondon, is all about. Good morning, everyone. My name is Researcher Miller, and the SCP we're going to be studying today is SCP-1678, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-1678 remains only partially contained. Mobile Task Forces Tau-4 and Epsilon-6 have succeeded in establishing a defense perimeter around the Hyde Park District of SCP-1678. With cases of SCP-1678-A largely ceasing their attacks on the perimeter of the Foundation-held area. A long-term research base is currently under construction, and Mobile Task Force commanders are preparing an assault on the SCP-1678 Natural History Museum with the intent of capturing a forward command post to direct defense efforts. Current short-term aims involve the capture of an extension of the defensible perimeter to the SCP-1678 Natural History Museum, and to research and ascertain the origins, construction, and weaknesses of the SCP-1678-A entities. Long-term aims involve efforts to halt, hinder, or control the reduction of SCP-1678-A entities and to assault the SCP-1678 Houses of Parliament, where the being, entity, or intelligence responsible for the creation of SCP-1678 is believed to reside, and to capture and contain the aforementioned being. Alright, so... You did get some of it right. There are other entities there. Dashes, right? They're calling them Dash A's. It's a nice little section right here that I, I don't really get. I mean, and this could just be for the sake of how it was written, but... It talks about where they're talking about attacking the house, houses of parliament so that way because they know there's an entity there or some kind of intelligence that are responsible for the actual creation of 1678 how did they get that information description scp 1678 is a full-scale mirror image reconstruction of the british city of london located exactly one kilometer underneath the original city of london currently only the hyde park district of SCP-1678 has been explored, but all buildings, at least within the explored district, correlate exactly to their surface counterparts in terms of location, as well as the exterior size and shape, although rarely in terms of architecture, building material, and interior layout. The city has been constructed to resemble the city as it was in the Victorian era, with constructions designed to resemble traditional gas lighting prevalent on the streets and with all modern buildings in the original city of London being represented in a Victorian style of architecture, most notably the skyscrapers of the business district. Illumination is infrequent and unreliable, and it is unknown how SCP-1678 has acquired a steady oxygen and gas supply. All right, so since it's an exact, I mean, obviously, give or take the few things that they just mentioned, of actual London, I wonder if at any point or if they've even been able to explore past London. I mean, I understand this SCP is called Unlondon, so it's specifically focusing in this area, but I wonder if there's been any attempt to go past to see, if it's not only London, but 
actually the whole world that is like this. So I'd be just curious to kind of just see how fa how far they were they could be or would be willing to push those boundaries to see if it's the whole world or if it's just like the city itself specifically. SCP-1678 is believed to have been constructed instantaneously by unknown means. With the I know I just paused again, but what is the belief that they're thinking that this is just created instantaneously? The SCP-1678 houses a parliament serving as the epicenter for the construction process. This is evidenced by the fact that as distance from the houses of parliaments increase, there is an exponentially increasing frequency of flaws in the construction of SCP-1678, such as houses built entirely out of copper pipes or other unconventional materials. Gas lights being little more than a metal rod topped with a floating orb of light, buildings containing no floors, and at the furthest explored distance from the epicenter, no windows or doors. Aside from the Foundation occupants and cases of SCP-1678-A, B, and C, SCP-1678 is believed to be uninhabited. Alright, so they just answered a couple of my questions, uh, specifically with the epicenter of, of the Parliament building. The fact that the buildings they tend to get farther start to have less detail to them, like no floors or being made out of copper, as they said. Now, they did say that right about here and at the furthest explored distance from the epicenter, no windows or doors. So it's not saying that they found the edge, which is kind of what I thought at first when I first saw it. But it's saying that that's just as far as they've gotten to. So the whole thing about the whole world being underneath our world, it's still kind of up in the air, I guess. SCP-1678 is believed to have been constructed with the intent to harbor the survivors of an XK-class end-of-the-world event. This is evidenced by an audio recording that will activate and play upon any person entering the city. The following is SCP-1678 audio recording. Entrance to On London. My fellow citizen, if you are hearing this tape, then the world as we knew it has finished. The sky has broken. The ground heaves with a tramp of terrible feet. And all the horror and madness from the dark corners of the world has broken free to exact its vengeance on the world of man. Those who sought to contain them are killed or scattered. And we soon learned that to attempt to fight these creatures is almost invariably to face one's death. Countless billions have been slaughtered in their attempt to sate their endless appetite for death. And there is nothing, was nothing we could do to stop them. Evil has raised its bloody flag upon all nations of the world and crowned its unholy victory to the broken sky. Yes, this is the end. But there is a new hope. Welcome to Un London, a city of survivors, a city of the free. Together, fellow citizen, we will wait and prepare for the new beginning. The grand new world that is soon to come. Let the world above burn. We will endure. Let the monsters have their world. We will prepare. And let the ground tremble with a new Armageddon as evil consumes itself. For I tell you, citizen, upon the day of the ruination of man, their insatiable appetites will turn them against one another in their endless lust for death. We will wait. And I tell you, citizen, that there will be a new morning, and you will emerge from un London and stand blinking in the sun, as our children play and laugh in the bones of horrors long dead. And you will walk hand in hand to the sea, our faces skywards, as the rising sun ushers in the new age of man. And you will gather, citizen, at my feet, as I summon on London from its rest, and it shall burst phoenix-like from the ashes of the earth. And on that day, citizen, there shall be a new order as we raise the Union flag over the entire world. I welcome you to on London, the last city, and the first. 
I'm just gonna rewind a little bit because I need to make sure I'm not missing what I'm thinking right now. All right. All right, so I found the part of the script that I was at as far as what it said. It was constructed with the intent to harbor the survivors of an X XK class end of the world event. And this was due to the recording that they hear at the entrance. So right here, it's seeming a lot like some form of SCP or some, maybe it could have been a group as well of SCPs. From this paragraph alone, it seems like there was SCPs that were messing up the world. These people hid and on London. It would have made sense considering in this universe, it doesn't seem like it's post-apocalyptic, right? Um, unless they were in a different reality and somehow on London was transported somewhere else and they're just unaware of it. And then as soon as we start scrolling down, right? Because that's really the first thing that I'm pretty sure would pop to most people's mind is that SAPs are going to be the one responsible, right? For breaking the sky, essentially. Because it keeps saying the broken sky. And I have seen a thumbnail about un-London being when somehow correlated with when day breaks, right? I haven't seen that video yet, but this might be a little hint as well to include that which i should react to real soon because this is getting re really interesting because they keep talking about the broken sky so i'm assuming they were in their world yeah because then that would make sense right because then if they're in their own reality and then everything's getting turned into little mushy little scp right little scp monster thingies so they decided to hide underground and that's why they say that the lighting isn't that very well lit because it, it was always that thing about how, how people were commenting as well that that's a big thing as well is that people were saying that no normally you would be wanting to go to the light and you would expect the darkness to be like where the evil things are where your imagination takes over your own mind right but since it was the opposite it was like a big mind fuck right so I'm assuming that these people went underground in their reality when day breaks was happening. And as they were under there, possibly went to a different reality. And they still think that they're in when day breaks. And because of that, that could also explain why in the thumbnail that the person in there or the dash, whatever you want to call it, has his face covered. And she to have his whole body covered because he doesn't want the sunlight to touch him. Dude, this is <laughs> oh. This is a big, this is big right now. This is big. Also talk about right here, let the world burn, right? That makes me think of the sun. Let the monsters have their world. All those little dashes that turn into that little gelatinous gloop. As evil consumes itself. So eventually they'll start consuming each other as well. So it really seems like these people were just trying to survive. And that being, maybe being underground for so long or just coming from a different reality changed them mentally physically but if it's not that which even though i'm assuming i have i feel like I, there's enough evidence to at least say that the one because with that video of when day breaks on london i'm assuming that that's going to be the one that's tied to this reality there's a lot of evidence, evidence to suggest that this is kind of probably what happened although i don't know how exactly i like the little fine details because it could also be that this is just a completely different race of beings and that humans, we, maybe we outnumber them and maybe it was just humans itself that um, drove them down there because it also talked about, because right here it talks about, for I tell you citizen, upon the day of the ruination of man, their insatiable appetites will turn them against one another and their endless lust for death. So it could just be that it was people, and that these are just completely different beings. But then again, I don't know. I feel like the unlended one probably makes the most sense. So I'm going to go ahead and just really stick with that in mind. So I know that was a lot. Um, and hopefully I was able to get it out right. I'm going to make sure to edit it so it sounds very nice and smooth, or the smoothest I can get it. There are other audio recordings here. I will describe each one before I play it. The following message is relayed on the end of every hour. The time is nine o'clock. All is well. 
Obviously, every hour wouldn't say 9 o'clock for any of you smart asses out there. That was just an example. This plays on approaching any bank or police station. Citizen, you are entering a restricted area. Have your authorization papers ready. A bobby will arrive to escort you shortly. Warning, a single case of SCP-1678-A will be summoned. On being cited by a case of SCP-1678-A, the following audio lines play. Halt! Police! Drop your weapons! Come now! Let's be having you! Police! Don't run! Randomly, once per hour, the messages below are selected examples of the 1678 observed audio recordings. No one is safe from the influence of mimetic beings. Have yourself assessed today. You could be possessed by a mimetic horror and not even know it. Psych assessments are free and easy. Visit a clinic today. See, that's another thing. How do they know about mimetic beings, right? It could have been foundation members that were creating, creating this place on London, right? Do you find light uncomfortable? Identifying a cortex worm's infection early makes them possible to remove. Speak to your doctor today. Have you noticed anyone acting oddly? Tell a body immediately. Crime will not be tolerated in un-London, I warn you. The tormentors of society will become its defenders. Evil can walk in human form and human flesh. Stay vigilant. Are you frequently anxious or depressed? It could be a symptom of the pattern Screamer's influence. Notify a Bobby immediately. Ensure you are well rehearsed in all breach protocols. There is no excuse for panic or confusion during drills. Can't make ends meet? Do not be ashamed. Bryson's home for the poor is here to help. I rule in the interests of the many, not the few. There are no special privileges. Swelling and abnormal growths are an early sign of the slaver man's possession. Report any abnormal sickness to your doctor immediately. Each and every one of you is responsible for the safety of un-London and its citizens. Be watchful. Most explored buildings within SCP-1678 appear to have been outfitted for the purpose of extremely dense inhabitation, with closely grouped steel bunk beds a common feature in any building suitable for the purpose. Foundation researchers have advised that most explored buildings within SCP-1678 are unfit for human habitation. Due to a high performance of mold, damp, and poor construction within these buildings, some buildings are outfitted for other purposes. Most notably, the SCP-1678 version of the Natural History Museum, which is featuring an exhibit titled The Fall of Man, and contains representations of several known SCP entities, and images and artwork depicting apocalyptic settings. The Fall of Man and contains representations of several known SCP entities. Getting very big feelings again that this is that this was founded by the SCP Foundation as far as on London. And maybe the Parliament Building is where they have maybe some SCP there that can work as far as constructing things. The key threat posed by SCP-1678 is by entities referred to in some SCP-1678 audio recordings as Bobbies. Bobby is known to be a Victorian era British slang term for policemen, henceforth referred to as SCP-1678-A. These entities are constructed out of human corpses, crudely dismembered at the head, wrists, knees, and elbows, and reassembled using industrial hinges and screws. The head is always wrapped in bandages. They are dressed in a uniform similar to Victorian-era police and are extremely hostile towards Foundation personnel, attacking them on sight with improvised weapons. 
These attacks are always preceded by SCP-1678-A emitting a noise similar to that of a policeman's whistle, and all loudspeakers within 100 meters emitting the audio recording, Police. Halt. Criminal. Instances of SCP-1678-A are extremely resistant to damage, with only high-caliber rounds and explosive weapons proving sufficient to destroy them. They are believed to originate from a building named Bryson's Home for the Poor, as evidenced by an inmate-style jumpsuit worn under the uniform. Inmate-style jumpsuit. Are they, I mean, obviously they probably wouldn't send anybody else, right, besides um, MTFs. But since they're really hostile toward SCP Foundation, it could be that these guys probably have like some kind of personal grudge against them. Could be these are just D-class personnel. If my little theory about when day breaks, and that being connected with this reality, that maybe those are D-classes that went there as well, but obviously they ended up dying. To what extent they interact with other SCP-1678 entities is unknown. The following is SCP-1678-B overview. SCP-1678-B, role surveillance, also known as eyes in the sky. Cases of SCP-1678-B are biomechanical constructs which resemble that of a small avian life form. They are composed of central mass of a red organic matter, stitched together by a copper exoskeleton that resembles a spine and wing bones. The head has been demonstrated to be a small video camera, and remnants of feathers and plastic on the exterior suggests they were once intended to resemble a pigeon. Cases of SCP-1678-B are known to possess no offensive or destructive capabilities. Yet their ability to track task force movements should not be underestimated, as it is currently known if they are capable of communicating with or summoning cases of SCP-1678-A, cases of SCP-1678-B are relatively simple to contain or destroy, yet their large numbers makes their observation of Foundation activities extremely difficult to stop. Occasional posters throughout the Foundation explored area allude to their existence. These posters display an image of a small pigeon observing criminal activity beneath the title, On London's Eyes in the Sky, alongside a small message to the effect that anyone destroying or vandalizing an eye in the sky faces up to six weeks in the unit. And this is the SCP-1678-C overview. SCP-1678-C, role unknown, also known as Wretch. Cases of SCP-1678-C resemble a humanoid figure dressed in rags. They appear to be of old age and are usually, although not always, female. They have always been encountered outside the Foundation held area. There have been very few direct encounters with SCP-1678-C entities and it is currently unknown how many cases exist or to what level of threat they pose to Foundation security or safety. Encounters typically feature cases of SCP-1678-C sitting on a street corner with a begging dish, whereupon they will attempt to attract the pity or mercy of any Foundation personnel within their proximity with pleading or begging for food or money. Supplying a case of SCP-1678-C with food will cause them to begin weeping before dematerializing with a burst of dense black smoke. Foundation personnel are currently under instruction to not interact with them. They are briefly alluded to in a SCP-1678 audio recording. Do not pity the wretch. Allow them to pay the price of their betrayal for all eternity. Remember, citizen, on the day on London rises, I shall reward the loyal but traitors shall be forever damned. And finally, this is SCP-1678-D Overview. SCP-1678-D, Role Food Supply, also known as Dr. Goody's Wonder Food. SCP-1678-D is believed to be the primary food source on offer in the event that SCP-1678 receives full-scale occupation. SCP-1678-D is freely and easily available from steel vending machines installed in virtually every building or structure outfitted for the purpose of habitation. The vending machines are upright steel pumps similar in size and shape to that of a modern petrol pump, containing a slot for the receiving of coins 
and a flexible rubber hose ending in a trigger-operated nozzle that will deploy half a liter of 1678D upon appropriate payment. All vending machines display the legend Dr. Goody's Wonder Food, alongside an image of a smiling child enjoying a bowl of SCP-1678-D and text bubbles advising that 1678-D costs just a farthing a bowl, that it contains all the nutrients you need, and completely restores health and vitality. It is proven to be extremely attractive to cases of SCP-1678-B, C, and unknown species of colored mollusk, which has been observed feeding on any spillages. Is that Wonder Food somehow related to Wondertainment? SCP-1678-D is a synthetic starch gel, heavily enriched with various minerals, vitamins, fats, and bulking agents. In addition to this, it contains several unknown molecular structures and various engineered DNA helixes carried within synthetic cellular structures. It has the same consistency and taste as porridge. As advertised, it contains all the nutrients necessary for short-term survival. However, Foundation researchers have advised that over a period of more than six weeks, users of SCP-1678-D will become dangerously underweight due to low levels of fat and protein within SCP-1678-D, and are at a strong likelihood of contracting illnesses such as scurvy if survival is attempted by consuming SCP-1678-D alone. SCP-1678-D appears to be purposely engineered to manipulate the psyche of the regular consumers. Through a mixture of unknown molecular compounds, regular consumers are more obedient to authority, are less likely to commit acts of violence, and are less likely to engage in sexual intercourse, have a reduced capacity for fear or panic, and have consistently high morale. In addition, it also has engineered side effects, such as depressive symptoms and headaches if a subject suddenly abandons consuming SCP-1678-D. Due to the difficulty of creating food within SCP-1678, SCP-1678-D would serve as the primary food source in the event of a large-scale habitation. Foundation personnel are forbidden to consume SCP-1678-D, even in small amounts. Not all vending machines produce SCP-1678-D to the same quality, with some machines deploying corrupted forms that have induced severe mental or physical abnormalities, or death within the consumer. It is currently unclear what entity, being, or intelligence is responsible for the creation and maintenance of SCP-1678. It is unclear as to what event or disaster SCP-1678 is being prepared for. All right, let's talk about that for a minute. So, got a big thing as far as what I was thinking about how the video where on London is taking place and a when day breaks type scenario I feel like there was a lot of connection here as far as how it may have happened or exactly what they're talking about as far as what did happen that caused them to go underneath and there was a little hint of a d-class personnel there was a, probably some kind of SCP that's being utilized in order to create things uh, in the parliament building that they kept on saying was the epicenter don't wouldn't exactly know who I mean, there's just a lot of strong evidence. Like, I'm seeing it right here, too. It's coming on my recommendations again when day breaks on London. So this is probably, like, a very big, as far as just, like, the connection, knowing that those two have met. And obviously, people will have, like, SCP Illustrated right here, I can see. Has already made a video on it about a year ago. But I am curious to see who is the one speaking in these recordings, in these audios. And since they said that the bobbies if i'm remembering right there are people who are already dead and that was it the wrists the head were screwed back on something some, something of that sort and they keep mentioning the wonder food and i'm thinking that that most likely is related to wondertainment but obviously not too sure and as far as them saying that it is still unclear as to what event or disaster scp-1678 is being prepared for Honestly, when day breaks, applies, there's just so much information in there that can cr create strong correlations as to how these two SCPs, I guess, would be in the same reality. So here's my only thing about when day breaks and this SCP actually being in the same reality. 
That would have meant that what we're listening to right now, it would have happened there, right? But obviously it didn't because they got MTFs going in there. Unless it was in a different reality that somehow got transported to this one. And then that's why they still believe when day breaks is happening on outside. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Really does help me out a lot. Hit that dislike button if you didn't like it. It helps me improve the channel. If you're curious to see what videos are coming up next, check the description down below. You're going to see a video list of about five. Top to bottom is going to be how I view them. But until then, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.